So um, what I'm going to do in my talk is teach you how to be 99% successful. And uh, I'm going to assume for a moment that you're all entrepreneurs. Uh, you all have startups or you're entertaining having a startup. Many of you already have a team or you have a wonderful partner. Uh, you've identified a problem or a need that you think needs solving and you've checked that it does need solving and that there is a big community and uh, many people who are interested in this need or problem and that you have a nifty solution. And of course, I'm also going to assume that those of you who have a startup or are beginning to set it up have 100% confidence that you're going to succeed and make millions. Of course, that is a prerequisite if you don't have confidence in yourself, nobody else will. But here's the thing. Uh, how many of you have ever thought of what the success rate is for startups? Well, it's a bit disappointing. Um, generous people will tell you that maybe 5% of startups succeed. Very generous people will tell you that maybe 10%. But people like me who aren't generous are going to tell you that the statistics show that less than 1% of startups actually succeed in becoming commercial enterprises and making lots of money. I don't know whether you're surprised or not, but those are the statistics. So how can you turn the 1% into 99%? And that's what we're going to discuss today. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I think that the way to proceed is to look at the lives of tennis players. Tennis players, you might ask? Yes, tennis players. So let's say for a moment that you're a really good tennis player. You've been practicing for years and learning and training, and you rise in the ranks. And then one day you get that coveted letter from Wimbledon. You have been accepted to play in the men's or women's singles tournament at Wimbledon, along with 127 other players. You're one of the best 128 tennis players in the world. Wow. But what are your chances of succeeding at Wimbledon? What are your chances of winning? Well, let's figure this out. In the first round, 64 people are going to win and 64 people are going to lose. Uh, second round, 32 people are, you know what? It's much easier. Everybody loses at Wimbledon, except for one person, the eventual winner. Everybody else gets kicked out, humiliated, has to shake hands and leave bent over sadly, and one winner. And one out of 128 is a little less than 1%. But hold on, I hear you tell me. That's not fair. Isn't playing at Wimbledon a huge success in itself? Isn't that a marvel? Well, yes, but it kind of depends how you define it. So what is success anyway? So I went to the dictionary, and Merriam-Webster Dictionary has two definitions. For success. The first definition is wealth, fame, fortune. Sorry, folks, that's the 1%. Yes, we all covered that 1%, and, and we should. And I must admit that during my long career, I did have one successful venture. I invented a product that became very successful. I had an exit, and it is a very exciting moment in your life. And I wish it upon everyone. But there's no roadmap. I can't teach you how to do it. I can't teach myself how to do it. I failed, failed dozens and dozens of times, losing the money that I made. And it's an event that you can't predict. Because to succeed in business, especially when you have an idea that nobody's done before, you need to have a, the market in place. You need... Uh, what happens if there's competition that you don't even know about? And look in today's world. There's so many things that you cannot predict on the way to commercial success. You need magic and pixie dust. More about that later. Well, let's talk about the second definition for success. 
The second definition, according to the dictionary, is achieving a desired outcome or goal. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today mostly. The 99% of attaining what you set out to do on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Because this is what you control in your startup and in your life. So I would say that there are two achievable goals that we have to yearn and, and strive towards as a startup individuals. Let's look, first of all, at the company level. What do we want to do as members of a team in a startup? Well, the first thing we want to do is have a product or a service that works. And this is something that challenges people like Camille day after day. And my argument is that you have to be in the zone on a daily basis. And like Richard Lucas says, when you go to bed, at night and you look at yourself in the mirror, you have to ask yourself, have I progressed in my goal of providing a service of value, a minimum viable product of value for my community, for my customers? This is going to be my daily goal, achieving a product. So you have your company's day-to-day -day success in pre creating something of value. And then you have your own personal day-to-day -day success in creating a human being of value. Because startups are the best place to grow as individuals. What can we learn in a startup? Well, what did I learn? You learn to be a CEO and a CTO, to negotiate, to read contracts, to sweep the floor when you have to do, to fail millions of times and dust off your knees and get up. You learn languages, you learn to negotiate, you learn to work in a team, you learn to compromise, you learn to listen. There's so many things that you can learn on a day-to-day -day basis that make it worthwhile of being in this startup community. That could be the 99%. Let's go back to tennis for a moment, okay? Because the tennis players that succeed are the ones who look at the 99%. They don't look at the 1%, this rare success of standing on the podium and gloating in victory and throwing their shirts and towels all over the stadium. Because if they do that, they're liable to lose the game. What professional tennis players concentrate on is not the match, it's not the set, it's not the game. It's the volley, it's the serve and volley now. It's this point in time. And that's how they succeed. And my suggestion to young people, and I know it's difficult because we all want this extra 1% at the end of the day. We want the glory, we want the success, and that's okay. But in order to do that, we first have to have something of value. That's the 99%. That's the value that you have embedded in your company and in yourself as an individual. And I will tell you a secret. Smart investors don't invest in the company. They invest in the people behind the company. They know you're going to pivot. They know you're going to change. They believe in you more than your idea, your product. They're putting money in you. And when they see you develop as a human being, they don't say, oh, you're wasting my money. On the contrary, they know that you're putting their money to good use. So back to the tennis players for a moment. Tennis players know that to have something valuable, they have to have something of value, which is winning the point. To grow as an individual, to have a product that works, a service that answers the need of your community, that in my mind is the 99%. And if we go back to tennis, the tennis players who concentrate on the serve and volley and forget about the glory are also sometimes the ones that end up winning. And my experience teaches me that the companies that work on the product, if you go and study history of companies like Google and Facebook, they were interested at the beginning in doing something awesome, in having an awesome service and product. 
The fame and glory is a rare event, but it only com comes to people who have developed something of value. And in that, I wish you great success as well.